want to invite up our first speaker of the day, Cora Van Urs from, from Delphi. Thank you very much. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, uh, I hope everybody can understand me in my uh, Dutch-English language. But uh, uh, yes, uh, my name is Cor van Oers and I work uh, at Delphi. I'd like to tell you something about where everything from bio-based starts. That's because the growing of plants. And it's everything that we do in our research station and that we, uh, I would also like to take you a bit along in agricultural economics, because I think this is a bit underestimated in the whole world of bioeconomy. Uh, so I'd like to tell you something about uh, bio-based innovation garden. This is our, the thing that we do together with research station Rusthoeve, which is located in Zeeland, in the southwest of the Netherlands. We are. Uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, funded by the province of Zeeland and by the branch organization of arable farmers in the Netherlands. Yeah, so maybe just to get started, I work at Delphi. Who is Delphi? Delphi is a uh, consultancy and research organization. We have, we are a small company we have about approximately 250 researchers and consultants, from which about 50 or 60 are not working in the Netherlands. We are an international orientated company. And we do our own research, and therefore we have our own research stations. This, for instance, is for greenhousing. It's in, the, in Blijswijk, not so far from here. And we do our own research mainly in these kind of stations. For arable farming, we also do research, but we do that mainly in the southwest on the research station in Colijnsplaat, the called the Rusthoeve. So I would like to tell you something about the global demand on, uh, on, uh, on chemicals, but also on all kinds of new materials. And you can see that the demand which we see is developing in the near future, is really very big. Um, and we see that the, this is uh, coming from uh, an institute in Germany. And you see that the fossil-based, we have to reduce, and we have to move more on to plant-based materials and move on to a bio-based economy. Uh, so this is maybe you just have to get the figures inside you and you will see that it's quite an, an impressive uh, challenge that we have to meet. Uh, the global demand is of course not the European demand, but it says something about the European demand and we can translate this back to maybe the Dutch demand, which I can tell you something uh, for in a few minutes. Uh, I would like to take you uh, especially into the demand for fibers. Um, fibers, we can uh, distinguish the uh, destination for fibers, the application for fibers into, I think, three mainstreams. Uh, the first one is making paper it for packaging, paper and carton. Uh, the second one, very important, is textile. And the third one is construction. Um, maybe a few words around paper. We have a big project in the Netherlands concerning, uh, together with the German uh, uh, industry, uh, about miscanthus. Miscanthus is a perennial grass, and in, for that we grow it for especially toilet paper. So that's an interesting application, and this is not only a pilot scale, this is really getting into a upscaling uh, system because we already need a thousand hectares. I will get to the point of the hectares and the surface needed in a few minutes because that's also a challenge. In the Netherlands, of course, we know how to 
polder. Eh, to make a new polder. So maybe we should take this into consideration and maybe think about the North Sea or something. But that will come in a few minutes. Uh, textile is also a very interesting thing because all of the uh, European textile industry is of course uh, disappeared and moved to the Far East. And the other thing is that we do not wear natural fibers, but we do wear fossil-based fibers. I would like to ask you if you can look into your, the men look in the, in the label of your coat, eh, because it's not in, in your neck anymore, it's in, the, in, the, in your inside bag, or on, on whatever you have on, and, and tell to yourself what is it made for, from. And then you will see that it's almost always it's a, made from oil, or it's at least a hybrid, but very rarely it's made of 100% natural fibers. So this gives quite an enormous challenge to meet this. So textile is an important thing to look for, and it will be a challenge to get this back into Europe again. We are working on a few projects on this. I cannot tell you exactly what they are, but it's all about uh, flax and hemp and to get the uh, spinning industry back to Europe again. Then I'd like to focus a bit on construction. Construction uh, is in the Netherlands really hot. Everybody is talking about building materials, bio-based building materials, and we think this is the, the solution of all a lot of arable problems, arable farming problems. Uh, in the Netherlands, we have at this moment a shortage of approximately 900,000 houses. So that means a tremendous pressure on the construction companies to build more houses. Unfortunately, we not only we have a carbon crisis, we also have a nitrogen crisis. And due to the nitrogen crisis, it is a bit difficult to get permission to build more houses. And it, this gives the, uh, the construction companies, they are more uh, uh, aware that they must build on a more sustainable way their houses. So this also means that the interest for bio-based materials in construction, and this can be all kinds of things, isolation, but also construction plates or building materials, the interests are getting really up high and the expectations are getting higher. So there are possibilities, but is growing all these plants just for building houses, is this feasible? Um, just to get a bit back to the bio-based innovation garden, eh? it's not our objective, maybe to get this clear, it's not our objective to just cultivate plants. It's our objective, of course, to look for new applications eh? for these plants. So eh? within all the projects that we do, we try to look for new applications. Uh, we work together with different partners. We don't do everything on our own. Um, so we try to look on the fiber and the constructions. Uh, we mostly explore the growth of the plant and how it, what is the best way to cultivate the plant. That's basically uh, outdoor research. Uh, but we also have a network built around it and where we do uh, 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 our exchange of knowledge in different ways last few years, of course, in a digital way due to uh, Corona, but we also have major events. And if you want to take a look at our uh, research station where we grow over 80 different varieties of, uh, of uh, biomass, you're very welcome on the 4th of July uh, this summer at uh, the research station in Colijnsplaat. Uh, crops, I have mentioned this already. This is... Uh, how will I say this in English? Uh, uh, never ending. A never-ending story, yes. <laughs> there are 
moreover than 240,000 species, and we have tested approximately more than 100 kind of cultivars and uh, varieties in our garden. Uh, so there are a lot of possibilities. Anything can be done, you can say. We can make anything from biomass. That's my slogan. Eh? We can make anything, but the next question, of course, is who wants to buy our products? That's the main problem, main problem, main challenge. Eh? Uh, because everything is possible. I just show you some uh, some figures about some crops, and that will make you understand what what kind of amounts we are thinking about as we are talking about a farmer. Uh, we have different kind of crops, sorgo, flax, hemp. They are all uh, annual crops, so you sow them in spring and you harvest them in autumn. Miscanthus and bamboo are, of course, perennial. You plant them once and you keep them harvesting for maybe 15, 20, 25 years. That's a different kind of cultivation. Uh, you see that all these things have different aspects, different uh, 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 things that you must take into account, both as a farmer, but as well as the buyer and the processor who processes the plants. Oh. Um, yeah, and then, of course, we have measured a lot of these things uh, on these plants. What will be the best application? Where do we... Uh, see the best opportunity for this plant, is it textile, is it construction, is it uh, another thing. The most interesting plants are of course the plants that you can do more than one application with, eh? that you do not have one single application and you throw the rest of the plant away, but you have more than one application. Eh? That's for instance we take in this kind the hemp uh, crop, uh, in which we can use the leaf, the stem, and the root also has a function, but we can also use the, uh, the seeds from the plant. So the seeds can be used for uh, producing oil, the stem can be used for producing construction material or ropes. Hemp is a very old uh, cultivar, eh? even the Romans used uh, hemp, and the, 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 the famous ships here in Amsterdam, which sailed to, uh, across the world in the, in the golden age of the Netherlands, they also used hemp during those days. This is a very old bio-based material. Um, yeah, so I've already told this, I think. I will take you a quickly towards the, uh, the, the problem that, uh, that I already mentioned. This is the Netherlands, 4.1 million hectares. We have agriculture about 80,000 hectares. Uh, this means that we have about 12,000 farmers still, uh, arable farmers. Uh, and uh, we, in this one we have, you see the the, yeah, what about how it is now divided? Eh? So the 80,000 hectare of arable farm that I just, arable land that I just told you about, this is the, the way it is divided. You can see that the potato and onions are on the second and the third row. That doesn't mean that they are less important than grain, wheat, but they are uh, but grain is the largest crop in the Netherlands at this moment. And that is because it is a rest uh, crop. The other crops are more uh, financial interesting, but they have their limitations. <laughs> yes. But we need, like I told you in the, in the red one in below, we need about 50 to 100,000 extra hectares. What is the problem? The problem or the challenge is, of course, that it must be interesting for a farmer as well, not only for the producer and the consumer and the building construction, but also for the farmer. And he has a lot of costs. Um, so we have to replace, in fact, wheat by another crop. In my favorite 
it would be uh, hemp, uh, but that we have to make uh, rendement. Eh? We have to make uh, uh, money on the hectare. So I would like you to ask a question. What do you think a hectare of land in the Netherlands for farming costs? The answer is in red, of course. It costs 100,000 hectare, and the price is still rising. So with a, for instance, a target of 2 or 3% rendement, which is not high, you have to earn more than 2 or 3,000 euro per hectare. At this moment, the prices for hemp are still below that of wheat. So I just want to express that this is a challenge, of course. If we want to use it, we have to make, I think, maybe uh, the application of the hemp must be better, and the price for the farmer must also go up. Something that is interesting, that I have not taken into account, is, of course, the carbon capture from the plant. If we can make a system that this carbon capture from the plant gets priced in the near future and the price will not only get to the construction uh, company but also to the farmer, then this means that the financial revenues for the farmer will increase. Ah. <laughs> I hope that I've made you think a bit about the complication of uh, arable farming in connection to bio-based materials. Thank you very much. Thank you.